Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the King of Average Podcast. It's your boy, BB, along with... What's up, guys? It's Medic. And uh, today, we want to talk about... We want to get back into the uh, into the series that we kind of began with last week. The series that we, I guess we will quote, what makes a man? The certain qualities, the certain elements based on based on that, that car ride back from San Diego, right? What qualities, what elements makes a man? What qualities, what elements defines the ideal person you should move towards becoming. So this, so I guess number two in that whole conversation that we want to talk about, uh, which is today's topic, is the idea of integrity, the concept of integrity. Integrity is something, personally, I feel like is, is, is something that is lost in today's age. I'm not going to say 100% lost because once again, you do find every once in a while you meet someone and you shake hands with and you're like, this person, I, I can just tell this person has it in them. They have that it factor. They have something about them that just makes me trust them, makes me want to do business with them. Mm -hmm. It makes me want to introduce them to everybody else that I know, right? There are a lot of people still out there, but I feel like the majority of people who we know nowadays, it's they've lost this, this genuine element of honesty. What do you think? I feel like that's many reasons why people are so skeptical today, super cynical. It's... Not honestly, just by well, that's a choice, but I don't think it's it's just because of experiences. Now, when people constantly lie to you, when people constantly let you down, you start forming your own opinion or your own view about life, about human beings. So the next person that you meet, you're not going to be as open. And the more closed off as you are to a person, the more cynical you are to a person, the more I feel like that holds you back um, from actually getting to peel the layers out. To actually open up to someone. I'm one of those people. I'm very cynical when it comes down to people. Um, I'm not very trusting. And I'm one of those guys that slowly opens up. And then eventually, you know, uh, you once I open up, yeah, I'm very comfortable. But it takes me a while and a couple tests, or, you know, in my own mind to, to, to open up to people. But I guess I want to start off with the actual definition of the word integrity. So it goes like, it's the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. Honesty, honesty, honesty. That's something that's just about lost. When you look to when you look a person in their eyes and they lie straight to your face, that's something different, man. And many times you know when they're lying, especially when you know the truth. The fact that they hit you up with a lie, it's 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 almost childish. You cannot honor this person. Where is the honor? Where is the respect? Everyone's talking about how they want to be viewed, how they want to be respected, and how they're this and how they're that. Man, none of this is going to happen without integrity. If you constantly need to not to lie to people, if you constantly need to be disingenuine, you have absolutely no principles to yourself, then in that case, I don't want you in my life. And who will? That's facts. Actually, who will is a great... Uh, it brings it brings right back to what we started with and what I want to bring it back to. Someone who does not have integrity, somebody who simply is just not an honest person, doesn't hold their morals well, would you consider that person a man? Is that man worthy of bringing somebody else into their life, having a relationship, getting married? What if that person now has kids? Would you trust them as a mother, as a father, right? And obviously, those that at this point, this is like, those are, that's, they're all rhetorical questions. We all know the answer to them. Integrity is heavily important, and one of the biggest ways that I like to see integrity at least in my own mind, is asking myself the question, what is it that you do when nobody is watching, right? And it's funny because going back to another sports reference, people always talk about, people always talk about like, you know, Kobe became Kobe, not because of what he did, what he did in practice, but because of the practices that he did on his own without anybody being there, without anybody watching. He might have mentioned some of it, but a lot of it you simply don't know and you don't see, right? And he had integrity towards the game of basketball. One way I like to look at it in a very, very personal example is these remote jobs. The advent of remote jobs, you know, post-COVID. It's crazy because I, I was blessed with a job where I was able to had a full desk, full work set up at home in my room, literally two feet away from my bed. <laughs> That's so tempting. Oh, it was it was horrible. It was horrible. And, you know, I've admitted it, I've, 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 I've admitted it before to you and I think on the podcast as well. Where it's like, yo, I was abusing company time, you know? I had, for that job specifically, I started out really trying to, I was, I really wanted to care for it. I really wanted to. And then, and then came, you know, the, the misery, the, 
and then came the uh, the laziness, whatever the case was, and I really did lose integrity for that job, and I'll admit that to anyone. But with everybody else who has remote jobs working from home, they know nobody's watching them. What are they actually doing? Are they focusing 100% of their eight hours on their job? So that's a perfect example of it. You can It's mostly applied in the workplace, but it also could be applied in so many, so many other fields. Now, I wanted to actually ask you a question because you said that you're the type of person where it's hard for you to build that trust. It's hard for you to see the good in people off the rip. It takes time for you to, you know, they have to prove themselves to you. As you know, I'm the exact opposite. I'm the type of person who's too trusting off the rip. How much do you think our decisions to be the way we are is based off of us projecting insecurities or us com- just completely being off of experience in life? So, uh, because I, because I'm, I'm kind of challenging you here. Mm-hmm. Because based off of what you're saying, if it's hard for you to see that people have integrity, it could be you're you know projecting your insecurities on them. But by no means am I saying that's that's who you are, and I know yeah. that's not who you are, mm-hmm. right? I know you're the type of person who you build trust through experience. You've lost trust because of experience, right? I know that about you. But in general, how much do you think either or will affect? So just like anything else in life, there's a balance. I have this mindset towards people simply because I'm a firm believer of actions speak louder than words. I I could be out here talking about how amazing I am. I'm the best employee. I'm the best husband. I'm the best whatever it is. But then my actions prove otherwise. I'm able to just lie to you. I'm able to just do whatever the heck it is. I feel like when it comes down to it at the end of the day, there needs to be a fine line. If you're, out, if you're overly cynical, then no one, either you're going to be alone. Where if you're too naive, then a lot of people will be around you, but you're going to attract a lot of the wrong people. And you're going to be run over a lot. If you get lucky, you might find one person or two people that actually actually care. But for the most part, you're going to get taken advantage of. And you will have it in your kindness of your heart to constantly overlook it and just constantly get hurt, in my opinion. So I, I personally do this more of a challenge to the other person is, you know, respect is not given. It's earned. Show me. I'm not here talking up a storm about myself. I don't need to. I'd rather prove myself, my value, my worth to you over actions than over words. I like how you mentioned the whole thing about like talking up a storm about yourself. Because I always I always put myself in this position where I, funny enough, having a podcast really is the opposite of it. But in most situations, whether it's, you know, I'm meeting someone new or, you know, we're discussing a certain topic with friends or whatever the case is, whatever, let's say, for example, if I have, if it's a, if it's a situation in which I have to like talk about my abilities or what I know or what my knowledge base is or whatever the case is, I actually really, I'm, I, I catch myself and I do a really good job at saying a lot less about myself. And we kind of talked about it with like, with the conversation about confidence. People who fake confidence, they talk up a storm. They say way too much come and find out they can't back up half of it. For me, I put myself in a position where I'm like, you know what, don't gas yourself up too much because you just never know. You never know if you can, like for example, when you over promise, you never know if you can actually deliver the promise or if you're going to under deliver it. So one of the things I'm, I find myself really, really good at is just, I just speak less, I promise less. I try to keep it quiet unless I'm telling a story. So I'll tell the details. I'll tell the hell out of the details of a story. Maybe You're probably you know. one of the best storytellers I know. I appreciate that. Uh, but when it comes down to gassing myself up, talking about myself, I really keep it to a bare minimum. Because at the end of the day, I have to be honest with myself and I have to say, you know what? One day I'm going to make a mistake. And for me to say, oh, I'm the type of person who never does X, Y, Z, or I'm the type of person who has X, Y, Z habits... And then come to find out one day you call me out because you're like, oh, you said you were this type of person, but here you are doing the exact opposite. To avoid situations like that and just be honest with myself, I don't talk about it too much. I don't need everybody to know every last detail of what my habits are, of what's going on. So I like how you mentioned that part. So I want to add something. So we're talking about integrity, what it is to be a man. We could always talk about how other people don't have integrity, right? And a part of integrity is honesty. How about how many people think that they have integrity? Like as yourself, do you believe, this is not a question really directed specifically to you because I already know the answer. It's no. But do you have integrity, right? 
No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we agree. <laughs> but seriously, you need to be honest with yourself. Are you lacking? Do you find yourself giving a lot of white lies, major lies? Do you find yourself scamming people, taking major shortcuts? If you do, don't be a victim about it. Accept it. If someone sheds light on whatever it is that you're doing wrong, depending on the approach, because this is almost going to turn into something else, but basic communication is so freaking important because say if you mess up and whatever it is, my approach of how I bring that to attention or to light is honestly going to be whether you hate me or you respect me. If I come up to you with a whole bunch of aggression and start yelling off the bat, then you're going to be like, screw this guy. I don't want to listen to him. This guy's tripping. But if I come to the, if I come at a different approach, peaceful approach, and you can automatically tell based on my demeanor, the way I speak my body language, that I actually, you know, care, then it's up to you at the end of the day to be like, you know what, that person's right, instead of that person's out to get me. There's a huge difference. Now, there are going to be people that are out to get you, not in like in a paranoid sense, but people that just are, don't don't like you, the whole concept of a hater. But not talking, not focusing on that, you need to look yourself in the mirror and really, really be honest with yourself to be like, you know what, I am a flawed person. And this may be an opportunity for me to become a better person. That definitely does go into a, it could definitely lead into a different topic, but it actually also connects back because let's say, for example, the person in the position where, who is trying to teach you, who's trying to correct you for something that you're doing wrong, that person might do it with integrity. They might genuinely want to see you succeed. They might genuinely see you improve. So the way they're going to have wisdom behind correcting you is going to make you more susceptible to learning. It's almost like an older brother. Or like an older sibling. Oh, here comes the trauma. So, no, it's like, it's the whole like approach, right? They may mean the best. They want the best, but their approach may be completely off. And just because of that, you question their intentions. And it takes a whole bunch of just like knowing a person to finally realize like, hey, look, this person probably wasn't saying the best... he probably wasn't or she probably wasn't wording it in the best manner, but I get where they're coming from. Yeah. Tough love. So going back to the idea of what do you do when nobody is watching? You know, do you do you fulfill your like if you're working some job, do you just fulfill your duties or do you go above and beyond? Do you just do what is asked of you or do you find opportunities to do more only because you know there's more to be done within the time you're getting paid? And especially in a job situation, but even outside of a job situation, for me, integrity revolves heavily around intention. And most of us, I'd like to say, it's very natural for people to have good intentions. Actually, they even say like when when children are born, they're not born evil. Human beings are born and typically they are born with good in mind rather than evil, right? But when it comes down to displaying your intentions, that becomes that becomes a situation that, that's very, very common nowadays, especially with, you know, from Facebook to Instagram to whatever, whatever, people want to... People really, they, they want to have like this public display of their intentions to show that they are doing good, almost as if to prove that they are good people, which is fantastic, right? It's motivating to others, inspires others to also do good. Are you referencing like a Mr. Beast kind of thing of like giving out charity and making videos and stuff, like clearing blindness and but putting it up on a YouTube video? and? Yes and no. Okay. Because Mr. I actually, I actually really respect his approach. No, no, yeah, because because Mr. Beast, no, he's he's uh, he's actually insane. I feel like he does it in a way that like genuinely, even though it's for the content, I feel like genuinely he does it. Like the fact that like when you see like when you like hear interviews about him and stuff like that, he always talks about whatever money he makes from his YouTube videos at the end of like production of another video he's broke. usually back to broke yeah right so I mean, it kind of like you know when he says stuff like that but once again you know that's a that's that's displaying uh uh like him saying that could also uh kind of in a sense push a certain intention forward right but whatever the case is right we're not going to compound that idea but mr beast is different i'm talking like you know the random dude on facebook who's just like oh you know i just bought a bunch of pizzas for the homeless it's like you know what you know good on you that's fantastic did you have to film it right did you have to put people on camera who are less fortunate who are struggling did you have to show their situation right couldn't you just have gotten the pizza fed a bunch of random homeless people and then just called it a day went home and slept on it there's a certain there's a certain hadith that talks specifically about sadaqah about charity about giving and it says 
and I'm completely paraphrasing here. I should have brought it up. I just I just thought about it. Should we take a break and read it? I'm down. So while you're looking for it, yeah, that reminds me hmm. of of something that I heard recently. So you, you obviously heard about those huge, huge earthquakes that happened over in Turkey and Syria. Mm -hmm. There was one time there was like um, an yeah. influencer, yeah. Oh, okay. right? There was an influencer that went over there and sh you shot a whole bunch of videos of handing out food and, you know, I'm saying to like orphans and all this stuff, right? To all the victims that were that were affected by the, the earthquake. And this was in Syria specifically. So he was interviewing one of the victims, which is like a little kid and... The little kid they had he, the little kid had like a little lavalier on them, like a little mic. The little kid was walking away after the interview, and it was really interesting. He, they forgot the mic on the little kid, right? Because the little kid just kind of like walked away after the interview. The little kid was disappointed. He was he was he went back to his friends. He's like, these guys are filming all of our all of the ish that's going on in our life just for views. Yeah, and they caught that on their sound bit. That's crazy. You can be out there handing out pizzas. You can be out there at least projecting good. But people know when you're being disingenuine. If you're over there just constantly needing to to take a video of everything, okay, I could see I could see the other side. I could see that like, okay, I'm going to post up a video of me feeding the homeless, say like in Skid Row, just so I could possibly influence other people to be like, oh, look, medics doing this. It's really that easy. Why don't I do it? That approach... I respect, but yet again, it's like not many people will know your own intentions when it comes down to when it comes down to it. You know what's funny is is we keep uh, we keep doing this thing you and I where we talk about something and then we try to we try to back up the the side the other side again, right? Where it's like, oh, but if you're feeling if you're filming it in order to motivate others to show them how easy it is, blah blah. blah. We keep going back to like give them credit. But it's funny enough because you literally just gave an example of how the person on the receiving end was genuinely, a, like, they were genuinely not happy with it. They genuinely saw, yo, there's no integrity with this. Mm. They're purposely doing this for something of, like, an ulterior motive. Yep. And you know what's funny is I, when you're bringing up the story, I actually thought you were going to bring up a different story. But it actually shows the contrast. It shows what it, it shows the true definition of having integrity in a situation like that. Where wasn't there a guy who went to the Turkish embassy and anonymously donated like 10 million or something, mm -hmm. right? Completely anonymous. He said, they don't need to know my name. They don't need to see my face. Boom. Here it is. And I'm out. Who he is? Maybe they found out. I don't know, but the uh, the saying that I that I uh, that I wanted to that I was trying to refer to was uh, this is this is just off of the Zakat website. It says giving charity in secret. The Prophet ﷺ said that one of the seven groups of people that will be granted shade on the day of judgment includes the one who gives charity but hides it, so that even his left hand does not know what his right hand has spent. And you know what's interesting? And this is kind of awesome. When I was trying to when I was trying to find this quote, believe it or not, a very very similar quote is actually in the Bible. So I'm going to give credit where credit is due, right? Because at the end of the day, all the prophets preach the same faith. Cool? Cool. But it's the idea that you give in such secrecy that literally the other hand sitting on the other side of your body literally has no idea. You don't tell anybody about it. You don't gas yourself up about it. Absolutely no, but absolutely nothing. That is one of the true signs of having integrity. Just completely concealing your good intentions. Even in a situation like the workplace, right? And you know, maybe maybe it's a little bit different for something like the workplace, where you're like, hey, I want to raise, and they ask you why. Oh, well, because these are what my duties were, but this is what I did to go above and beyond, right? That might be a situation, but it's definitely not a situation where, let's say, for example, you know, the, the regular day in and day out goes around but you want to tell every one of your coworkers, oh, I didn't even take a break today. I didn't even take lunch today. This is what I had to do today. Like, there's no reason for all that. If you want to complain, you're just complaining. There is nobody's going to look at you and go, oh my God, wow, what a what a what a person of integrity. Let's, let's start. Let's start. Let's start clapping for the person. Honestly, you want a cookie? <laughs> <laughs> Such a common thing. Honestly, man, look. The easiest. I'm going to break it down. The easiest way to find out if a person has integrity. It's very simple. See whoever puts their shopping cart back in the right place. <laughs> that person. What's that one guy on TikTok who like? He's like, oh, he legit presses people. He, yeah, yeah. He has like, he has like magnets that he sticks on their car. Yeah. That's like, 
somewhat offensive because they don't put their carts back. Uh huh. That dude legit. It was one time somebody pulled a gun on him. That was crazy. Yeah, I know this. <laughs> I would too. Integrity. Pull a gun on him. <laughs> <laughs> but going back to it, man, integrity could be reg- like whether you have this person in your life that is for the best, or you have this person in your life that is literally for the worst. A toxic relationship could be many things, but people who are disingenuine and also that do not have principles, right? Because that's the second part of the definition of integrity. Do you have principles? Man, if if you don't stand on anything, you ain't got no base. You ain't got no stability. So I feel like if you got nothing to stand on, you're going to search for people to stand on. I feel like you're getting really close to an actual quote. What is it? What is it? Um, if you stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything. Basically, it, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, it, funny enough, what was it? Literally, was it you just, no, two days ago, two days ago, we were talking about the whole idea behind like morals and values and, and, uh, people who, people who decide to just cut the idea of God out of their life. Oh, but I'm just going to be a good person and treat people nice. It's like, you literally posed the question, who, who set those morals down? Mm-hmm. Who set those values? Up? Who told you what it takes to be a good person? Yep. Right. And literally without morals and values, you, you've lost the plot. You've lost the plot. And that transitions into a completely different conversation. The idea of choosing your indoctrination before your indoctrination chooses you. Because most people who grow up and they, most people who have no integrity, they've grown up in a situation where they decided, you know what? I'm going to leave my core beliefs, right? And I'm going to quote unquote, be spiritual and just be a good person. Most of those people have godlessness in their lives. Most of those people have no integrity in their lives. And you ask the question, why? Because once they've taken out that quote unquote, structured religion from their lives, who's going to hold them accountable? No, what structure do they end up following? Mm. The structure of social media, social media becomes their God, this celebrity, that celebrity, Elon Musk did this. My financial decisions are completely based off of X, Y, Z in the world, right? There is, it's, it's, it's whatever the world presents to them becomes their indoctrination. But rather somebody who has, who follows a structured faith, right? How many things does society throw at us that we literally physically have to curve out the way? Why? Because we hold our core values. We hold strongly to our morals. So it allows us to stay steadfast. I like that. So question for you. When is it okay to be an overachiever? And is there such thing as having integrity in achieving or quote unquote doing the bare minimum? Or is it only is integrity only for those who are overachievers? I'm honestly like, I'm probably gonna answer your question with I'll be honest, it's a tough question. Another question. Okay. I like right? that. I don't like that, but okay. But I'll elaborate. When was it cool not to overachieve? Like when has it ever like when did it become not cool to do your best? Are you considered a loser? Like you're you're considered think about it, like logically. You're considered a loser if you do the best of your ability, whether it's in school, whether it's in work. How stupid is that? Yeah, it's become it's become a sarcastic uh it's become like a sarcastic saying to call someone an overachiever. It's a sarcastic saying amongst the person of average amongst the 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 field of regular people that's exactly it cash out you got the overachievers are people who are bringing just about the most value to this life your elon musks and then all of your other major major people right those are people who are over overachievers whether it's talking about religious figures whether it's talking about business figures whether it's talking about the dalai lama whether it's talking about whoever right these people went above and beyond. And because of that, for either the good or the worst, right, society has then had some influence or at least a major influence over that. So to say that overachieving is bad, my opinion, I don't think it is. Now to overachieve or to overdo something, yeah, whether it's being annoying, whether it's, you know, too much of this or too much of that, right? But we're not talking about that right now. To overachieve, I think it goes back to our Islamic belief of the term basically ahsan, right? Excellence. To overachieve is you're trying your best to pursue excellence. Hope that answers your question, bud. Excellence is definitely a part of integrity. I feel like definitely the biggest the biggest connection for this whole conversation really is the idea of 
having integrity also entails going above and beyond whatever it is you're committing to. How can you perfect something? But I guess I'll reword my question because the question was a little bit, like even as I was asking, I was like, all right, so I'm not right with this question. But my, I guess if I were to rephrase my question, could someone still have integrity by just achieving rather than overachieving? Rather than overachieving, could you still have integrity by just doing the bare minimum? And I guess that's a question that's kind of like, you know, there could be a little bit of back and forth, a little bit of debate on that. But what do you think? As long as the person is doing their duties, they're holding up their end of the bargain. If that's the case, that that's the bare minimum. In my opinion, that's my definition of bare minimum is that you have certain tasks that you're assigned and you achieve them. As long as you do them, that is, in my opinion, the bare minimum. In that case, you're not really cheating anyone. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. I would agree. I feel like I feel like definitely to a degree, if you were just doing your job, doing what you are told, I feel like that could be I feel like as long as you're consistent with it, right? Really, an example that I keep thinking of is the idea of like the five daily prayers. You can overachieve, right? The Prophet Wasallam, it was recorded, he used to pray up to 50 units, 50 rakahs a day, right? When you take the five prayers, it only mounts up to 17. The Prophet used to find ways in between prayers before, after, right? In the middle of the night, whatever, whatever. He used to mount up to 50 units a day. And kind of a fun fact, it kind of goes back to when he uh, did the Isra and Mi'raj, uh, and when Allah prescribed prayer to his ummah, he started with 50, and then eventually went down to five. Yeah. It's almost as if, like, he used to pray 50 units a day to honor that Allah, Allah's first request of 50. Fun so facts. Allah, wow. Fun facts. That's kind of cool. So, when it comes down to prayer, you have your five daily prayers as a Muslim, right? I feel like, you know, some part of me says to have integrity, you have to go above and beyond. You have to say, no, I'm not just going to pray what's required of me. I'm going to do more because I know I can, right? I feel like that's the true definition of integrity. But I also, I also know some people where the moment that Adhan goes off, Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, no matter what, within two minutes of that Adhan going off, they're already praying. And I feel like with that kind of consistency, with that kind of honesty towards the prayer, towards just wanting to do your duty, I feel like there is some integrity in that as well. And I feel like that is also very well respected. You're right. But all I'm thinking about is they have a value proposition. They see the value of overachieving. Now, if it's going to be from the religious perspective, the more Sunday you pray, the better it's going to be. You're building houses in Jannah. You're getting a whole bunch of good deeds or extra good deeds. And now when it comes down to work, your extra credit, right, could be then, of course, like a school reference, of course. But that extra work, the overachieving, the extra hours that you clock in, those are going to be because you see a value of working going above and beyond in the future. So when you do ask for a promotion, when you do ask for a raise, they'll think about you and they will remember you. So going back to it, I think maybe the difference between achieving and overachieving is the person that overachieves sees the value or sees the bigger picture there's a, there's a why they're overachieving as opposed to the person that is just achieving the person of bare minimum they don't have that vision they're just told what to do and they just stick to it i like that i like that a lot that was epic i know we talked about it a little bit earlier in the podcast in the episode but yeah, no, I mean, for the most part, yeah, we talked about it. Constructive criticism is, I feel, is a great way to develop better integrity. Being able to accept constructive criticism. And now I know for sure, for sure, 90% of people don't take constructive criticism well. They really don't. It's like the moment, oh, so you're going to tell me that I did something wrong, that I could do better? There's 90% of women on this earth. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's hilarious. Uh, I feel like most people, they, they don't react well to constructive criticism. I personally use it as a great uh, interviewing tool for like a future, like a potential employer. I'm always like, yeah, dude, I take constructive criticism so well. And they're like, oh my God, wow, so honorable of you. But I really do though. All jokes aside, um, constructive criticism is an excellent way to develop good integrity because once again, it kind of it kind of goes back to the you know, one of the basic concepts that we talked about, shattering your ego in order that you can find opportunities to learn, trusting that, you know what, if this person's correcting me, chances are I might have done something wrong. And even if in that situation, you did not do something wrong, 
maybe you can still take a step back and ask yourself, what could I do better? From there, once again, you take the right mental notes, you apply it next time, and you literally just become better. There's opportunity for growth, and there's opportunity to have more integrity in all that you do. And Matic is uh, signaling me like I'm a plane, you know, ready for landing. So we're going to bring this ship down. Ship, plane. Ship, plane. Plane, ship. Uh, integrity, you know, honestly, I, I, I'm, I find it really difficult to, to walk away from this topic because I feel like there's so much more that could be said, which is definitely a conversation for next time. <laughs> but with that being said, uh, I feel like, yeah, integrity. Integrity is a good one. What are your closing thoughts? My closing... <laughs> I gotta do laundry too, bro. <laughs> He's got clothing on his mind. <laughs> You're clothing what? My closing thoughts on integrity is that we don't have enough of it, of Oof. a society. Oof. That's what it is. Oof. Deep. If you listen to this message, we need to do more. We need to do better. We need to be the reason why people want to do better in life. And I think with these talks... <laughs> Go ahead, just let it out, buddy. <sighs> I, I did really well, and then I, like, imagined you saying it again. We need to do better. <laughs> I just lost it. <laughs> uh, all right. We as a society. Need to start taking this podcast more serious. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do better. That's what it is. That's the challenge to everyone. Do better. Because we really do need to love each other we really do need to rely on ourselves or on each other i should say society humans as a whole we work best in groups all throughout history nowadays i feel like it's us against each other and it's, that's not the best thing america was great based on crum the basically based on everyone everyone coming together as a collective towards one goal and doing their best at it and doing their best we're number one remember they used to always chant that they don't chant that anymore. So we definitely need more of it. It is for the best. It is for the betterment of society. It is for the best of mental health. I mean, it's just going to be a positive snowball effect. That definitely is a great way to, to finish it off. I think the best question you can ask yourself, whatever it is you're getting into, whatever it is you're getting into, every step along the way of every single day, if you ask yourself, how can I be better? How can I do this specific thing better? Then like you said, it will have an effect overall on ourselves as individuals, on ourselves as a community, because then we can expect the best from each other. And when we expect the best from each other, we can better rely on each other and we can grow together. And with that being said, I want Maddox to close out. That being said, that concludes episode number 10 of the King of Average. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Till next time, this is your host, Medic and BB. And we're signing out, guys. Peace. Peace.